In this module, I'll look at how Platform RTM helps us monitor Platform LSF workloads. Information about running jobs is accessible from the Job Info section on the left panel. Let's look at job details. On this cluster, called PC, we're tracking over 24,000 jobs, most of these being elements in a job array. Currently, the view is filtered to show only pending jobs. I can filter jobs by all kinds of criteria, including users, user groups, job groups, and application profiles. I want to view active jobs for all application types running on the build cluster. I'll select active jobs. For sites using Platform LSF application profiles, we can restrict the list of jobs to only those running under a specific application profile. I see that many of our jobs are running at low efficiency. This might be okay depending on the nature of the application. Just as I can manage hosts and clusters through the web interface, I can also manage jobs. I'll select one of the jobs that's presently idle. I can perform various options on jobs like killing them, suspending them, resuming them, or changing the position of pending jobs in the queue. I'll filter this list to see only the jobs in the release queue on the build cluster. And I'll click on the job ID of one of my running jobs. This job is running on a Windows host as we see here. This level of detail is available for all of the thousands of jobs monitored on the cluster, including completed or exited jobs. In the Job Details section, we see information about the job, how it was submitted, and information about the host execution environment. We also see the process IDs that comprise the job, time spent in various states, and resource use so far. This job has been running for about three hours. Just as we saw host-related graphs in the last module, we can view information about the job graphically. I'll click on the Job Graphs tab. I'll add the legend to make the graph easier to interpret. The first graph is showing us how the memory consumed by the job is changing with time, both in terms of physical and virtual memory. The red area represents physical memory, and the yellow represents virtual memory. This job could benefit from running on a machine with more memory. After about 90 minutes of execution, memory required exceeds physical memory. A job like this would be a candidate for some of the advanced scheduling capabilities in Platform LSF, like resource requirement expressions that ramp with time. For the first hour of execution of this job, a large amount of memory is being wasted, so other jobs could perhaps be scheduled on the same host without impacting the job significantly. The second graph is showing on a different vertical axis the rate of change of virtual and physical memory requirements as the job runs. Platform RTM is sampling the job every five minutes, so results appear in five-minute intervals. This helps us understand the point at which the runtime characteristics of the job is changing. We also see the actual CPU time consumed both in user space and system space as the job executes. This job spawns multiple processes as it executes, and some processes are multi-threaded. Not surprisingly, we see that our change in physical memory requirements corresponds to the point where additional threads start. I'll scroll back to the top. It's instructive to compare details about how our job executes over its life cycle to resource availability on the host. We can conveniently see details for the host that the job's running on just by clicking on the Host Graphs tab. Looking at resource availability relative to job resource requirements helps us fine-tune policies to make sure the workloads are placed optimally on the right type of host. This can help us get work done much more quickly. Let's go back to the Job Details view. Another nice capability new in Platform RTM8 is that we can get insight into why jobs are pending on the cluster. Let's switch back to our PC cluster where you recall we have many jobs pending. I'll select the PC cluster and I'll focus on only pending jobs. Now I'll select one of these pending jobs. This job hasn't been scheduled to a host yet. It's been pending we see for over six and a half days and is currently pending because no job slots are available. Six and a half days is a long time to wait for a job to run so we might want to review the pending reasons tab to understand in more detail why the job hasn't been scheduled. This chart shows the various pending reasons on a timeline. At any point in time, a job might be prevented from running for various different reasons. In this case, though, the dominant reason is just that our cluster is fully loaded and has been for about the last 10 days. 
Often administrators want to focus on particular pending reasons. I can configure these reasons in the Settings tab. We can select the reasons that we want to include or ignore. This concludes our quick tour of monitoring jobs in Platform RTM. Administrators can learn just about everything there is to know about their jobs and workload patterns and how they're using cluster resources. With this new insight, administrators can identify and remove bottlenecks and improve efficiency. By understanding pending reasons or removing them where possible, service levels to users are improved, and users save valuable time resulting in improved productivity. This all results in better overall utilization, opportunities to save cost, and a more satisfied user community. Thank you for your attention.